Hello guys and welcome to our discussion on long division. This is Mr. Hanrahan and we are going to talk today about what long division is, how it can be useful in solving problems, and then we're going to take a look at an example and kind of walk you through step by step and show you how it's done. So why don't we start here with this question. What is long division and how can I use it? Well, I'm not going to give you the standard textbook definition, but what I will tell you is that it's a very useful process that allows you to take really big numbers and divide them up into smaller equal groups. As far as how you can use it, well, there are many, many applications, but I think we'll start with this one right here. And when you look at this picture, my hope is that a very obvious question kind of pops into your head. And if you are wondering where this guy's teeth are, that's not exactly the question I was thinking of. But rather, if you had $648 and you wanted to divide that up equally amongst 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 people, how much money would each person get? Well, the example we're going to look at today is going to answer that very question for us. So before we get started, there's probably a couple words that we want to look at here. And the first one is dividend. And the dividend is going to be that big number that we start with that we're going to divide up into smaller equal parts. In this case, we have $648. Now, the next word you're going to want to pay attention to is divisor. And in this case, it's going to be 9 because that is how many groups we are going to create. And then finally, your quotient is going to be the answer to your problem, and that's going to be how much or how many are in each group. Now, we don't know that yet, so we're just uh, going to assign this a variable here and call it x, and that just simply means that that's a number that, that is unknown at this point. Now, when we work through the actual problem itself, we're gonna, it's going to kind of look like this and we're going to have the dividend inside the box and that's the number you're going to when you're reading the problem you're going to read that number first so it's going to be the dividend divided by the divisor which is outside the box is going to equal our quotient so here are the steps that you're going to kind of use when you're working through the problem the first thing we're going to do is we're going to divide and we're going to multiply down right away from there we subtract, and if you notice here I have the word compare written in parentheses, and as we work through the example we're going to talk about what we're comparing and why that's important. And finally we're going to bring down. After we bring down then, we're going to work our way back up and kind of keep moving through this process as many times as we need to arrive at our answer. So here's our problem here. 648 divided by 9. Now our first step is going to be to divide. And the way we do that is we're going to ask ourselves how many times does our divisor go into the first digit of our dividend? So obviously 9 does not go into 6 at all. So the next question then is we're going to, we're going to take a look at the next the first two digits rather of our dividend and say how many times does 9 go into 64? Well, that answer is 7, and as you can see, I kind of line up the 7 here with my 4. Now, the key was that we wanted to get as close as we could to 64 without going over, and I think 7 does that for us. We'll see here in the next step, we're going to multiply, and we're going to say 7 times 9 is going to give us 63. So, and again, notice how as I'm going here, I'm, I'm really lining up these numbers. So from here then I'm going to subtract 64 minus 63 is going to give us 1. And at this point here we're going to take a moment and kind of talk about this is where we compare. So after we subtract the number that is left over we're going to compare it to the divisor. And it's really important that that number is less than the divisor. If it is equal to the divisor or greater than the divisor then I have a problem up here and I was I need to go back and, and change this number but for now 1 is less than 9 so I can go ahead and move on to the next step and then I'm just gonna bring down that 8 so I'm left with 18 down here 
and then the process kind of starts over again. So we're going to divide 9 into 18, and that's going to give us 2. Multiply down, we take 2 times 9, and that's going to give us 18. You can see here this is, this is going to work out uh, very nicely for us, because the next step then would be to subtract, and we'll take 18 minus 18, and we get 0. Again, very important to compare at this point. 0 is less than our divisor, so we are good to go on to the next step, which would be to bring down. But when we look over here, there is nothing left to bring down, and there is no remainder down here. So at this point, my problem is complete. So 648 divided by 9 equals 72. 72 is my quotient. So let's go back and compare this to the example we started with. So we had $648, and we asked the question, if we were to divide that up into nine equal groups, how much money would each person receive? Well, the answer to that is $72. And that's it. So if this is you right now, and you're thinking something along the lines of this, um, I guess I can offer you a bit of advice. The first thing I would say is relax because this is something that's going to take quite a bit of practice before you really become comfortable. Um, I've taught many students through the years and it is very rare that I teach someone one time and they completely understand and master this process. It takes repetition, it takes practice, it takes getting comfortable with that whole divide, multiply, subtract, and compare, and bring down. Now, once you get to the point where you've, you're feeling very good about that, and, and you're, you're, you have the steps down, and if you're still struggling, my next advice is, is I'm going to question, you know, how strong are you with your multiplication facts? And when I say multiplication facts, I'm talking about those basic facts like 9 times 7, 6 times 8, you know, 8 times 7, um, those, you, you really need to develop a fluency and a mastery of, of all of those facts because long division is based on the repeated, you know, dividing and multiplying those, those basic facts over and over again. And if you're not at a point where you're really smooth and, and, and really quick with those, this is, is going to present a, quite a problem for you when, you when you attempt to do these things over and over again. You're going to get to the point where you don't even want to finish the problem, let alone uh, you know, be able to come up with the correct answer. So, you know, and it's not just long division. I would really encourage you to work on those facts, find out which ones you're struggling with, and really spend some time drilling those over and over again and, until you really master them because this is really going to be kind of the foundation of a lot of the math that you're going to be doing over the next several years. The third thing I'd talk about is, you know, keeping your work neat as you're working through these problems. If you look here, you know, it's not by accident that these numbers in these columns line up so very nice and neatly. Um, you know, with so many steps in each problem, it's important that you line up these numbers because if you don't, things are going to kind of uh, you know, just open itself up to, to making mistakes, and, and you don't want that. So aside from these three things, um, if you're still struggling with this, I'm, I'm guessing maybe you're working with a problem that's a bit more advanced. Again, this problem was kind of an, an introduction and, and just kind of talking about what long division is and you know, giving you a very simple example of something that worked out very nice and neatly. Um, if you're working with two-digit divisors or maybe a couple of zeros up here in the dividend, or when we start working with some of the things that we're going to be you know, doing with remainders, then that's going to require a bit more practice and a bit more explanation. So that's all for now. Uh, hopefully this video helped you. And um, you know, next time, if you tune in, we're going to be talking about long division with remainders, so be sure to catch that one. All right. Good luck, keep working, and bye for now.